So tonight is the uh, Saturday night, July 25th, and uh, tomorrow's my birthday. Be uh, I'll give my birthday talk tonight. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow there'll be a variety of, uh, well, hard to say, not, I mean, not a huge number, uh, but some Thai people coming to, uh, uh, for my birthday, and then I'll give a, I'll get, after the meal, I'll do a live streaming in Thai for, for my birthday, so. Good timing for tonight. Um, yeah, the, uh, it's been, been uh, quite lovely the, this past week. Yeah, since last, well, since last Saturday. Um, uh, and tomorrow will be the last day, so it'll be like nine days altogether of uh, people coming, they sort of set up a, a roster, uh, people coming to offer the meal uh, and uh, for, my, for my birthday, uh, and uh, giving, the, giving the kitchen a break, and, um, but then also um, having the opportunity to, yeah, to make offerings in, in Thai, as in Tambun, to make merit and, and uh, make offerings <coughs> uh, in honor of my birthday. So rather than it being, well, since we can't gather anyway in any kind of numbers, uh, so they, they decided to split it out over over many days, and and each day people have have uh, have come, and there's been offerings, and I've had a chance to. It's actually been quite uh, lovely in that uh, um, it ha cause sometimes my birthday, then there's this big influx of people, and. Uh, um, you know, it's, and it's a whole big thing, and a lot of people show up, and uh, it's a bit chaotic, and and, and you can't really um, have much of a um, personal interaction. Uh, there's just there's, oftentimes there's just too many people, so it uh, <clears throat> there being. Um, Smaller numbers of people, small groups of people coming each day. Um, then I've been able to meet and talk, and give a reflection, meet with people. Uh, so it's been quite, uh, quite, quite, quite pleasant, and and uh, and it's been quite touching as well. Just the. Uh, um, the uh, people have made that effort to to uh, uh, to make offerings and and uh, sort of dedicating the the uh, uh, the blessings of their generosity uh, for uh, my well-being and of course, but everybody benefits you know, well-being of the community and. Uh, <clears throat> And that's the, uh, you know, I think that's one of the, the great uh, benefits of blessings of of this meritorious action is that it everybody everybody. Uh, the, uh, it's not, 
that 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 uh, the effect of generosity and uh, yeah, kind of a, a selfless uh, is 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 a benefit to everyone. Where uh, the uh, um, the effects of of uh, self-centeredness and and a kind of of uh, uh, a hesitation to do that which is good is a uh, um, I mean it's kind of limiting uh, and uh, and is is a uh, um, um, isn't isn't quite as bright uh, and I think that's uh, you know, the world needs some brightness. There's a lot of drab. This, uh, this period of, say, pandemic, uh, that sense of a uh, uh, drab, more. <laughs> uh, we've all, uh, this is sort of the... Uh, People are with the same people in the same situation in in the same routines over and over again, and it's uh, uh, yeah, there's a certain drabness to it, and and uh, yeah, to be able to have a an opportunity to bring some some kind of brightness is is really is really helpful <coughs> and enjoyable. And as I, and enjoying goodness is is a uh, something to delight in. It's thinking in terms of brightness, uh, you know the uh, <coughs> the one of the. Uh, I'm just thinking in terms of like with mindfulness. Because it is like, like 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 meritorious action and and doing things that are good or not. <coughs> um, you know, it, it's good on its own, but it's also um, you know what is it? Uh, if you're reflecting in on terms in terms of its uh, relationship to to dhamma and our practice of dhamma and cultivation of dhamma. Um, you realize that that uh, you know we're, we're we're trying to do those things which are um, yeah to, to help to nurture the practice of dhamma and grow in the qualities which help dhamma to grow. So that uh, a cultivation uh, of mindfulness. Uh, is a uh, like mindfulness, attention, awareness. These are are uh, hmm? yeah. Batteries are good. Okay. Yeah. It's cutting out. Hmm? It's cutting, in it's cutting out. out. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's of a impermanent, uncertain nature. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, just reflecting on the, you know, the things that help. Um, yeah, mindfulness, awareness, attention, and uh, mind support that. Oh, uh, one of the things that that uh, uh, think what comes to mind is is like uh, if you go to a uh, McDonald's or a Burger King or a In and Out. Um, they have a really generic quality uh, to the 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 uh, the ambience. I mean, it tends to be really bright, 
and tends to be uh, very, you know, really super well lit, and uh, and that's well thought through. I mean, there's a, there's there's uh, uh, psychologically uh, there's a reason for doing that, uh, so that people won't stay there very long. <laughs> no, it's true. Um, uh, this is the, of course, they, you know, they do their market research, they get their psychologists, they get their marketers, and they realize that if, you, if you've got uh, this sort of a bright space, uh, people don't stay there very long. And, uh, you know, our minds are the same. <laughs> you know, if we kind of brighten our mind a bit, you know, kind of this moods and thoughts and, and proliferation, they just don't stay very long. Or, the, you know, you can see them more clearly, so they can, you can shoo them out as well. <laughs> you know, whereas if, if it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's these, these kind of obsessive thoughts and, uh, you know, anxieties and proliferations, they hang around in these sort of dark corners and there's, there's, there's these limbic sort of areas of the, of the mind that, that aren't very well defined. And then they... they uh, yeah, and then they just keep, keep sort of festering, and and uh, uh, so it's it's just you know, sort of finding things that help you know turn up the light a bit, keep it bright. It's uh, it's helpful for that, that, that mindfulness and being able for uh, to be able to see more clearly and and let go of these different different mental states that are are uh, are problematic. So this is. You know, the, uh, uh, of course, the Buddha was the um, preeminent being who understood the nature of the mind. So um, you know, that that, uh, that turning attention to to the things that help the mind to to be clear and and bright. Um, well, that that. Uh, you know, I think the the you know just basic things like that are really, really, uh, really important, really helpful. Um, and just sort of reflecting on my own. Say, yeah, a so birthday is coming, time is passing, and uh, um, you know one of the qualities that comes to mind uh, when I'm reflecting on, on, okay, on time passing, um, it's just a tremendous amount of gratitude. Um, the, uh, and of course that's, that's a, a very bright, meritorious kind of mood. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of gratitude for um, having had the good fortune to to meet the Dhamma, meet the Buddha's teachings, to be a part of the Sangha, being part of communities, um, both here in America, in Thailand, and of course the uh, broader community um, that we have around uh, the world. Um, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of gratitude at, at my good fortune. And uh, yeah, that's a, uh, uh, you know, I think that, that's the case to, uh, for, for all of us. So that says, yeah, this, this is opportunity to have Come into contact with uh, with these teachings and and and, and teachers uh, and people who are yeah really cherish uh, cultivation of of uh, of goodness. That's a uh, it's not a small thing. As it's uh, it really does. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a huge 
support for maintaining this, this commitment to, to cultivation. And one of the, the things that, that I was, today I was talking to, to somebody and, and uh, I was just reflecting on, on because uh, <clears throat> they were asking about meditation, about mindfulness, and, and uh, about particular about meditation. And, and uh, r- r- recollecting how, uh, you know, even though, uh, yeah, obviously, Meditation, mindfulness, these are very important foundations of a practice. But it's interesting how Ajahn Chah, um, even though he was a great meditation master, uh, he put a tremendous amount of emphasis on, on right view and sila, on virtue. And 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 right view, having that right understanding, because we can get a very uh, focused, worried on on how to get the right uh, meditation technique, how to be uh, mindful, or get obsessed with our own minds. And uh, and it can be a kind of a quagmire that we get bogged down in, but the the the, the returning to foundations of uh, say virtue, integrity in how we live and how we interact with each other as human beings, and how we view ourselves and view others. Um, that is a a huge support for the mind to to settle and to become clear because the the, the you know one of the um, you know in terms of insight and 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 uh, uh, understanding um, and, and gaining kind of a penetration of the of the Dhamma. One has to to be able to understand a kind of fundamental um, process of experience as opposed to the content. So like especially in in terms of the mind. Under the, and and the it's like our inner world our our emotions, uh, say the mind in terms of our thoughts and, and, and intellectual intellect, but then also our emotional world. But to understand the process of it as opposed to understanding the content. And we tend to get entangled in the content. Uh, we get caught in the uh, in the details of it the the the, the uh, that's what spin the content is what tends to spin off into into stories into reactions into justifications into rationalizations of of various moods into views and opinions into stances of preference and 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 our likes and our dislikes it's that content because it's it's compelling but to be able to keep stepping back and and and, and pay attention to the to the process what's the underlying process what are the characteristics what are the what is that what's that process of experience what's the process of of the Kind of that heart mind base of experience, and uh, and of course that that's uh, the, the, that relies on the, the, that 
just that quality of knowing, but that knowing is has to be rooted in integrity and 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 right view, a a, a, a fundamental, and of course you know I mean there's these things are are, are bleed into each other um, because you know. You know, right views are around, much more around the aspect of of uh, attending to process as opposed to getting too fascinated with the content. Um, and you know, I, you know, I think of of. Uh, um, of course, I, of course, the Buddha articulates it extremely simply, but, but really uh, uh, simply, succinctly, but very directly. Uh, like in the uh, <coughs> Anattalakana Sutta of the, uh, of course, he's questioning the, the, uh, uh, the, the, his, his first five disciples and, and, but, and pointing to the nature of of body, feeling, perception, uh, mental formations, consciousness, the whole base of, of, of our experience, uh, how the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the fundamental um, you know, foundation of what, how we experience things. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, you know, each one is, is it permanent or impermanent? Well, it's it's impermanent. It's it's changing, and that uh, you know, is that which is is impermanent, um, changing, subject to change. Is that satisfying or unsatisfying? Is it painful or is it pleasurable? Is it is it, uh, you know, is it, is it sukha or dukkha? He said, oh, no, this is, this is dukkha. That's un, it's uncomfortable. It's un, it's not, not, not satisfying. You know, and, and that which is impermanent, painful, of a nature to change, is that worth calling it? This is, this is me, this is mine, this is myself. He said, no, Venerable So that, 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 uh, uh, that recognition of that process of, uh, of impermanence, of change, of uncertainty, of, of the, yeah, the unsatisfactory uh, nature, the non-self nature, uh, those are those are aspects of of the say, yeah the process of experience of the nature of it it's how it always plays out and uh, and that uh, uh, is a uh, uh, you know, that's very it's really freeing to be able to to uh, to, to to reflect, investigate, and and to really see that clearly, clearly. Uh, that's uh, that's your you know, kind of a a doorway, a, a, a an entry point into into uh, an insight, and, and that's a, when the Buddha um, say the. You know, the words that the Buddha uses of of the uh, uh, you know the characteristic of insight or the essence of of insight is yatha bhutanyanadasana, knowledge and vision of the way things truly are, and to to be returning to that 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 that, that well, how do I uh, give myself the opportunity to experience that knowledge and vision of the way things truly are, because that's a 
Yeah, that's just a tremendous gift. And of course, it's not a gift just to oneself, but to be able to live like that is a tremendous gift to 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 every everyone, right? to all sentient beings. Um, but it's it's rooted in uh, in in uh, you know we can make it as, and we tend to make it fairly complicated, fairly distant. Uh, um, something that we we conjure it up as something uh, not so uh, you know you know it's it's something we we appreciate in others and 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 then overlook the fact that we can experience that and see that for ourselves very uh, very uh, it's not that inaccessible um but it does require us being willing to reflect, investigate, and, and turn our attention in that direction. There's a, uh, a great story of, uh, and I just heard it this morning, because uh, uh, when I'm, uh, I do my, uh, walking on my treadmill, <coughs> you know, listen, you listen to Dhamma talks, and this morning listening to a Dhamma talk, and he was relating a, a story of when when Ajahn Chah went to <coughs> went to England, and uh, he uh, um, uh, I mean he visited. This was his second trip uh, to England, and and Nupasamedo uh, um, had made connections with different. Uh, Buddhist groups uh, through uh, England and and uh, and there was uh, uh, beginning to be uh, quite a bit of interest. So he, one of the places that they um, went to, took Ajahn Chah to, was a, uh, a Tibetan center in the north of of England, and uh, uh, they stayed there and. Uh, um, Nupal gave a, a talk there in the evening and toward and you know met with people and then and, and, uh, uh, that in the uh, kind of at the end of the, apparently uh, uh, toward the end of the talk and the end of the evening somebody asked if uh, um Chao would would please teach them about vipassana and sort of which is um sort of literally means insight and insight practice and and uh, and uh, from the um you know for people they say i mean they were the practitioners in the tibetan tradition tr- tradition so they are and it's to in those days in particular there was a lot of talk about uh, different types of oh this is a kind of a, a tranquility meditation this is a, a samatha practice this is a vipassana practice this is like a insight and this is a way of and uh, anyway so somebody asked if Jin Cha would teach them about about insight, about vipassana. And so Ajahn Chah said, well, it's, you know, it's getting a bit late, so tomorrow I'll teach you about vipassana. He said, but I want everybody to bring a flower. And uh, so sort of, and there is some, uh, some uh, I, I have seen uh, like pictures of Lopa. Uh, cha uh, with uh, him, him with us holding a flower and uh, and I knew it was taken at that center but I didn't realize that there was a, a, he set this up and uh, and it, so <coughs> people so the next day um, people gathered and I think that Ajahn Cha was actually leaving that day uh, and uh, so he had every so everybody had their flowers and and he said okay I'll, I'll teach you about 
vipassana. He said, what I want people to do is to, you've got a, you've got a flower, and you, you, if you brought a flower, you probably picked you know, a, a nice flower, and it's this, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I want you to uh, keep this flower with you through the whole day, and keep checking in, and some, look at this flower, and notice the change. <laughs> and that was, of course, you know, if you've got, you've got a flower on its own, it doesn't take that long. For it to start to start to wilt, start to discolor, start to, and they say, you know, this is vipassana, you know? impermanence, change, uncertainty. It's not, you know, you want this flower to be, to be beautiful and to to maintain its its uh, its uh, uh, its kind of its beautiful flowerness, uh, but. Uh, it, it can't do that. And it's, it's just by its very nature, uh, it's going to, it's going, it has to change. It's going to change, uh, and uh, uh, and that that sense of its uh, nature of it being unsure. This is the, this is this is the insight into, uh, yeah, knowledge and vision of the way things truly are. And there's this sense of its, and then within that impermanence, that change, uh, yeah, you recognizing the its unsatisfactory nature, and that it's not under one's control. One can't sort of say, "This is me. This is mine. This is, and I want it to be this a certain way." It's just this. This is it. That is impossible. So it's a. This is a, a, a. This is a true insight. And so that to be reflecting on these things. So that just ordinary things are actually a, a doorway into, <coughs> into the, 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 the uh, into this this fundamental truth. <coughs> And that was something that was always really, uh, you know, Ajahn Chah lived that, and and he was, uh, you know, he was always, you know, for because it's not it's it's not sort of dismissing things. I mean, uh, uh, dismissing experience or just slapping a label on it. It's really by seeing that, then one's able to. Be with experience, and and uh, you know Ajahn Chah was a great example of someone who was really uh, uh, he had a zest for life. He had a zest. He had a, he had a real uh, uh, delight and appreciation of of mm, yeah of of life and of of the possibilities of the human condition. And uh, um, but he understood it very deeply, and, and that uh, so he was quite unshakable. He was always, and uh, and that was one of the say one of the qualities that really drew him or drew me to him was that 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 kind of unshakable quality. Um, just a steadiness within whatever was happening, because everything would be drawn into Dhamma, seen through the lens of Dhamma, um, <clears throat> or lens of truth. It wasn't sort of some doctrine. Again, it was just not just some doctrinal uh, party line that he was spouting. It was. It was, it was, it was it's how it's seen, experienced, and lived. Um, I think another, another uh, uh, situation comes to mind with with Ajahn Chah, where uh, he had built this uh, <coughs> new uh, uposatha hall, um, quite. Uh, it's quite a, 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 
a unique uh, structure, <clears throat> uh, different than traditional um, t- traditional Thai architecture for a like an ordination hall, uposatta hall, um, and uh, it it. Uh, I did, it was a uh, it was very open. I was up on a raised platform, very open and and very smooth kind of lines with uh, it was a molding of concrete. And so it was quite quite nice. We were, uh, it's an attractive building, but it was new. But anyway, the. Uh, <coughs> Somebody was was visiting there and and with Lumpaw and showing he was showing them around and uh, showing them around and then somebody noticed that the, a part of the you know it's fairly new and when you said but there was a crack in the in the uh, in the cement and and he said oh that's that's too bad it's it's so new but there's already a a crack here, and a Gentile immediately, oh, no cracks, no Buddhism. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's like, this, this is the, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's, it, 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 there it is, there was, there's the truth of impermanence and change and uncertainty, and that, uh, and the, uh, um, as much as you, uh, attention to detail that you put in and try to make things permanent and beautiful and and uh, lasting and and following one's one's preference and there's always something going to fall apart and something's going to change something's going <clears> to <throat> going to uh, uh, display that 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 uncertainty that, that uh, so that that uh, you know, that's just a, a it seems really ordinary uh, or very mundane even but it's because of that truth that yeah that there is a, a liberating teaching of the buddhas uh, that allows us to to uh, free our hearts and, and and understand the process of experience understand the fundamental Truths understand the fundamental trajectory of all all conditioned things, and that, that all whether it's internal or external, whether it's coarse or refined, whether it's near or far, this is the way things truly are, and it's in that seeing uh, that one has the opportunity to, uh, that, that, that the heart turns to, uh, to dispassion and relinquishment. You, you can't really, you can't sort of beat your mind into submission and, uh, and, it, and make it uh, turn to dispassion and, and relinquish or berate your, your heart into to dispassion and relinquishment. It's it's that seeing things clearly, and of course, that seeing things clearly a lot re, really relies on you know, bright states of mind, bright states of heart, uh, the clarity of of the of the heart, stillness, and so that there there's. A, is how the Dhamma unfolds, and it relies on, you know, and just as Sarakama started talking about the, just the yeah, meritorious action and people's generosity and people, um, but it it uh, it's that, that that building on uh, those those aspects of of, uh, of you know. Uh, uplifting 
qualities and then turns its its attention and re- recognizes uh, fundamental truths because you can again you can you can't think yourself into understanding this it's you have to have the have a, a, a stillness and clarity that then recognizes oh this is the way things truly are and then the heart uh, you know, that dispassion and disenchantment and relinquishment is is a natural response to that to to be you know, paying attention to the the, uh, the 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 process of experience, both the process of experience that leads to discontent and dissatisfaction, but the process of experience that leads to to to, to, to liberation and peace. I'll offer that for reflection this evening.